Hi there, this is David and welcome to the Top 10 Best JRPG PlayStation Hidden Gems. With the competition between Nintendo and Sony, the original PlayStation ushered in a veritable floodgate of quality JRPGs. And while it's pretty easy to pinpoint the best on the system, separating the wheat from the chaff and finding those hidden gems is a bit harder of a task. So I'm here to help. I'm actually going to be ranking these games based upon their relative obscurity. More well-known titles will be towards the top of the list, and then as we continue, we'll get to the real unknowns. So let's go ahead and get started going back to the library of this Golden Age console. Number 10. The Legend of Ligaya. How this game didn't spawn its own franchise, I will never know. Well, it did get a sequel on the PlayStation 2, but unfortunately, that is a complete dumpster fire. This unique RPG combines aspects of fighting games with turn-based RPG mechanics. Your heroes are able to input special moves or arts, just as you would perform a special move in Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat. The magic system is unique too. Over the course of the game, you'll encounter Seru, who you can absorb to learn up their magic. But I think that the best part of the game is the humor and the atmosphere. Mist is engulfing the world and people live in constant fear of it. So the people live in walled cities or towers raised up above the mist. And then it's up to you to revive the Genesis trees and free the land of that mist. Number 9. The Lunar Duology If you've been a fan of my channel for a hot minute, then you should know that I love me some Lunar. Way back in the day, I chose the first one as the best RPG on the PlayStation, and then whenever I made a part 2 of that list, I highlighted Eternal Blue as well. And yet still, here we are, all these years later, with these two gems still quite unknown. They're both traditional turn-based RPGs with a slight tactical combat system, similar to Popular Croy or Tales in the Sky. And they have that quintessential working designs humor that I love so much. Each of them take place in the world of Lunar, which is pretty much just our moon, and the bones of each game are the same, with each having a whimsical world, memorable characters, and classic 2D graphics, along with plenty of animated cutscenes. If you're a fan of RPGs of days past, then you owe it to yourself to play these two fantastic games. Number 8. The Mega Man Legends Trilogy When I was a kid, I loved the Mega Man series. I had 1 through 6 on the NES, and I even remember getting Mega Man 5 for my 11th birthday. I opened it up before school, and I brought the instruction manual to read with me during some downtime in 6th grade. However, I kind of fell out of love with the series during the SNES era and its transition to the X style of games. However, if the Legend games were around during that time, I would have been in love. Mega Man Legends 1 and 2 are an open world sandbox style RPG starring the Blue Bomber, while the third game, The Misadventures of Tron Bone, actually stars the villains. The entire series is hysterical and really ahead of its time. They're all massively expensive now though, but they are absolute gems if you can get your hands on them. Number 7. Valkyria Profile This is Tri-Ace's lesser known JRPG series, Living in Star Ocean Shadow, but that doesn't mean that it's not good, because it is beautifully fantastic, but just very different from other games. Valkyria Profile is a Norse-inspired side-scrolling turn-based 2D RPG. As you play through the game, you'll be exposed to vignettes, giving you a glimpse into the lives of the various people that you'll be recruiting, and then, more importantly, how they died. Then, it's your job to send them into the afterlife to fight. The game is very strange, but a lot of fun, and I would say that if there's one bad thing about it, it's that you pretty much have to follow a guide to get to the best ending. However, my suggestion is to just play the game and enjoy one of the best RPGs released for the PlayStation. Also, be aware that it has been remade for the PSP too, so it might be a bit easier on your wallet if you get it there. Number 6. Vandal Hearts This was one of the first games that I ever bought for the PlayStation. I mean, look at it. You can certainly tell that it's an early generation game. And coming off the heels from Nintendo, this was definitely something different. Nintendo wouldn't even let Mortal Kombat have blood on the SNES, let alone ridiculous geysers of it gushing out of the dumb bitches when you sliced them in two. I remember giving it a cursory glance at first and then thinking that it was just some ugly trash, but after playing and loving Final Fantasy Tactics, I gave it a second chance. It was then that I was really able to appreciate it for what it was, 
a short, esoteric, and most importantly, super fun strategy RPG with varied objectives, tons of different classes to experiment with, and an interesting storyline. Number 5, Thousand Arms. When I first heard about this game, I didn't think that it would be my cup of tea since it's a traditional RPG meets dating sim, which is something that I wouldn't normally be into, but I was pleasantly surprised by it, mostly because it's just all so nonsensical and ridiculous. If you're looking for a serious time, look elsewhere, because this is just downright zany. The dates play out differently and oftentimes hysterically, depending on what options that you choose, and it fully embraces its absurdity. Everyone is just off the wall wacky, the cartoony character designs are well done, the voice acting is hysterical, and all the unique locations that you visit just gives it an otherworldly charm. There's nothing generic here. The one-on-one -on -one battles are simplistic and charming in their own right, and especially because every single monster is just so lovingly drawn and designed. Number 4, Jade Cocoon. Do you like Nino Kuni? What about Studio Ghibli? And Pokemon? Well, then I'm sure that you'll like this forgotten gem on the PlayStation, and even its sequel on the PlayStation 2. Because it wasn't Nino Kuni that Studio Ghibli first contributed to, it was this. Jade Cocoon is gorgeous, not only in its graphics, but in the enchanting soundtrack as well. You take on the role of a Pokemon or Cocoon Master, who goes out to explore the mysteries of the world. However, rather than being a child, you're a married adult, which is a nice twist, and speaking of twists, just play the game for a bit because there is a MASSIVE plot twist around the midway point where the shit really hits the fan. It won't take you too long to do so though, since the entire game is only about 15 hours long. Number 3, Guardian's Crusade. I love this game. Sometimes short, sweet, and to the point is all you really need in an RPG. You don't need flashy CGI's or ridiculous hair physics. All you need is a fun game. And this simple gem delivers that in spades. You know how Earthbound had those great maps with the towns and the battles on the outskirts? Well, it's the same here with seamless transitions. Even whenever you go from a town to the world map, it's all in the same scale and it's open world. Combat itself can be basic since you only have control of the knight and the baby, but there's added mechanics, like how the baby can transform into monsters and breathe the fire up the enemy's asses, kind of similar to Blue Magic, and also the living toys scattered throughout the world, and they each have their own attacks too. This one is adorably simple, and in its simplicity lies its charm. Number 2, Vanguard Bandits. I am aware of the RPG purists out there who whine every single time that I bring up my love for working designs, but without them we wouldn't have so many different oddball RPGs like this one. And quite honestly, sometimes RPG translations can be a bit dry, so I actually like it when they spruce it up and add their own flair. Unlike their other strategy RPGs such as Summonite and Ark the Lad, Vanguard Bandits employs turn-based mech battles similar to the Front Mission series. The story is filled with twists and turns, as well as choices that actually matter, as they'll impact what missions you have to accomplish, as well as which ending you receive. And there are five different endings, so there's plenty of replay value here. And number one, Sayuki Journey West. I remember whenever this game came out in 2001. I was working at Publix, and a fellow co-worker told me about it because he knew that I liked Final Fantasy Tactics. And he was not wrong, because this is a gem. Sayuki is based off the 16th century Chinese novel, Journey to the West, where Sanso, a Buddhist monk, travels from China to India meeting mythological characters along the way such as Goku and Ashura. The religious themes of the plot are pretty heavy-handed, with Buddhism being heavily praised, while Hinduism, not so much. I mean, the Hindu gods are the main antagonists, and the party's goal is to rescue Buddha himself. I can't imagine this ever being released on Nintendo, but Sony really didn't give a shit. If you're looking for an obscure, highly challenging strategy RPG with a riveting story and delightful characters, look no further than this. Well, that's it for the best hidden gems on the original PlayStation. If you like this video and wanted to hear on the channel, Please consider supporting me on Patreon for exclusive videos and early access to my content, or coming on over to my Discord to chat and hang out. The links to them can be found both in the video description. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.